Hello and welcome to Microchips and welcome back to my High Gain 5. So in part 1 we sorted out the horrifically um, misaligned RF output stage, did some essential modifications and basically got the radio back to a decent condition. So in this video we're going to carry on and add some extra features to this radio to bring it back to its former glory. So first off we're going to replace the VCO and we're going to replace it with one of my voltage feed point modification VCOs which basically has got the voltage regulation built onto the board for a nice stable VCO voltage. So there's the original green VCO out. I'll just clean the area up a little bit. And there's one of my voltage feed uh, modification VCOs. So it's got one pin less on the underside, but we need to connect the red wire to the 9 volt supply inside the radio which usually can be found close by or the output of your radio's AVR so we'll neatly solder this VCO into place now at this point on this 121 board you can see the 9.32 volts from the AVR, so that's where we've soldered to. And onto the VCO test point, we're just going to check for lock across all the bands that we have. So it's all good. So next step is out with the PLL. And we'll try and tidy up this mess that's underneath. So out with that PLL-02A. Again, we're just going to clean this area up, see what we're dealing with. This is the beauty of my boards. You don't have to cut any tracks or leave a mess like this. So here's one of my new all-in-one boards. It doesn't require the PLL-02A to be inserted. It's using the serial programmable um, PLL chip. And this one is five bands plus alphas plus five KC. So as always, we just test fit it on the back of the board, make sure the holes are wide enough. And carefully insert it into place, making sure it's not touching the channel change in any way. Now we're going to solder it in and then I'm going to repair those cut tracks. Now thinking about it after, if I had some green UV solder mask, I could have covered it. Maybe for a later, later video on that one. But we just need to recreate what's been cut for the moment. I mean, at least whoever's done this hasn't used a knife and gone across the tracks. At least they've used what looks like a small drill. So it's kind of neat, but... Yeah, not very good if you have to try and restore it back to normal. So I'm using some 0.1 copper wire. And I'm just going to go along all the pins and reconnect them back up again. A little bit of a tedious job, but once it's done, I think that's about the best we're going to get. 
like I say, a little bit of green salt damask over that would have hidden that away nicely. Maybe I'll get some and do a follow up video. So there's our PLL module fitted and our voltage feed modification and VCO. So the next step is the band switch. Now with it being a 121, the crystals are controlled by a switch to 8 volts. So shouldn't be that hard to decipher. So once we've worked out which is low mid high, we'll make a note of the colours. So those are the low mid high and the 8 volts. And we've disabled the 41 to 80 readout. Now because we're using the 8 volts from the radio, we need to drop my voltage to my board with a 10k. And we've also wired up the alphas and 5kc switch into the two front switches. So we used a couple of diodes to go to the UK40 and the band below. So basically it selects like the high band and then you select the UK40, the high band crystal is still active. So looking at this schematic diagram of the crystal oscillator board from two different radios. One just has the clarifier, but one has a KC shift. And you can see extra components, extra varicap diode in place, an extra inductor. Now there are parts, um, markings on the board for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and recreate the KC shift by adding in the components that have been omitted. And we'll see if we can get a better swing from the KC shift than just using the onboard clarifier. So we've got the old frequency counter on. So it's not bad, it's not bad. We can move about 8 KCs. Which I think is fine, considering we've got a 5 KC drop on this radio anyway. So we don't need it to go down to zero. That should be enough 4 KCs either side. So what I've done here is I've used the original clarifier. Hooked up to the switch for the UK40 and we're going to use the original clarifier for the UK40 offset and we've fitted another potentiometer to our new KC so we can center it. So with the control being at 12 o'clock position we want it on the center frequency for that and when we move to UK40 you can see that is now the old clarifier which is switched in on the UK40 position. And then we have a good swing on the clarifier on the new clarifier which is now the KC shift. And as you can see the potentiometer there just centers it. So we've got a better swing out of that. We've got a UK offset that doesn't require really any extra components. Absolutely excellent. Really simple to do. We've brought back some functionality from some omitted parts on the radio. So let's do some alignment onto TP2 and we'll get that 10240 onto 10240. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, happy with that. Pretty much bang on. 
I want to go into adjust the actual crystals themselves to get them on so this is low band 26515 channel 1 and mid band 26965 which is channel 1 Go to high band. So twenty seven four one five for this. Once we've done that, we can adjust the offsets for the clarifier in the UK again to get them into their final positions. So we're on TP five. Checking the 10695, that's well within specification. Now on to LSB, adjust CT5 for 10692. Very, very sensitive this adjustment. So, a little bit of patience. And we get it to 10692. Now we'll check the LSB offset. It should be 20.1035. So this is CT4. So this does seem to be a way out. There we go, 21035. And we're going to check our VCO voltage now. Make sure it locks across all our new bands that we fitted. And we're a bit low on the top of UK40. So we'll bring that up by adjusting the VCO. And go all the way down to the channel 1 of our lowest band 4.5 that's good 1 volt on the top that'll do nicely so that's our VCO finally set Let's just go through the RF stage again. Try and level it out across all the bands. Because when we first aligned it, we'd only aligned it for three bands. Now it's got five bands, so we just need to flatten it out a little bit across all the bands. So we're just following the service manual for this using T3, T5 and T2 and T4 so T3 and T5 for the low T2 and T4 for the high now you may have noticed earlier on we had a switch on the back connected to a capacitor which is our bleep switch now this switch is intermittent I presume it's had water in it sometime in its life so instead of trying to repair the switch we're just going to fit a new one. I don't normally like switches on the back of things. But this radio is limited for switch positions. So it'll have to do. So let's test our new switch. That works a treat. 
So let's just finally check all the frequencies are good. So that was our minus 5kc. That's our alphas. And minus 5kc on the alphas. So those work just nicely. Now this cell call plug, as you can see, is falling apart. So we'll just hardwire that. So basically, it's just a case of moving this orange wire and connecting it to the green wire. That should stop any intermittent audio. Now, if you've ever wondered how I touch up the fronts of my radios, this is what we use. Some acrylic model paint. So we have matte black, semi semi gloss, full gloss, some silvers and clear coat. And for the lettering, we use these, these dry transfers. And once we've applied them and we're happy with them, we just put a little bit of clear coat on the top just to protect them. And after a little bit of work, this is what we've ended up with. So we've got minus 5kc, alphas and the new bands with lettering on the front. I've actually touched up a little bit of the paintwork as well, as best as I could, without making a mess. So I think it looks quite okay. Now the last modification we haven't done yet, it's a squelch pop. So we need to remove R132. And we need to add an extra wire underneath. So we'll just cover the holes up make them a bit neater and we'll add the wire into place and there it is completed so that should sort our squelch out so I noticed it had a strange noise when the volume was turned all the way down we had this noise which started to annoy me a little bit so I decided we'll try and track it down see if we can find out where this noise is coming from and see if we can make it a bit quieter So on the output of the audio I see, you could kind of see it a little bit. So I think we're going to have to disconnect some things, see if we can isolate where it's coming from. So what I've done here is I've fed the audio from the high gain into a multi-mode 2, which doesn't have this fault. And as you can hear, the noise has transferred. So that proves it's not the audio IC or its output. So it's the input to the audio IC. And we found out that it was this transistor after disconnecting it, which was Q34. There it is on the schematic, feeding the audio IC. 
So I'd actually disconnected the base of Q34 and it was still there. So we resprayed the cabinet a little bit. I could have done a better job, but it's definitely better than what it was. And there's our high gain five looking considerably better. Put some nice steel screws in it. And the radio actually works a treat now. Had some good reports on it. So there we have it. There's our high gain five. Taken from what was supposed to be working. And we restored it back to former glory. And added some extra functionality to it as well in the form of minus 5kc to put you onto zeros alpha channels an extra minus 40 and the uk readout anyway if you like this video or you like any of the parts in the video i do sell them thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video